Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, you know it's not working without you guys. So let's get open for business here and let's open up. Wake up. Wake up, guys. Wake up, the football gods. On this Christmas night, I hope everybody had a good Christmas. I know this year is a lot different than usual. Maybe by next Christmas, we'll be able to get back to normal. And uh, hopefully, I, I hope and pray for everybody. Thank everybody for all of the Merry Christmas, Happy New Year uh, wishes and everything else. They all go back to all of you guys as well. Like I said, to the best to you and yours. And hopefully, things will continue to get better. So... We have a big game this weekend. If Washington loses to Carolina, then that opens up everything. That means that the last week of the season, next Sunday, will actually mean a whole lot for our team. It's conceivable that either way, if we end up losing to the Eagles, that we could still end up being a top five pick. It, it, it's, it's, it's really crazy. We could end up winning and we could be, you know, rolling in, having a chance to win the division. This is just unreal, the situation that we're dealing with right now. The thing for our Dallas Cowboys, the offense has gotten a little bit better. We're seeing, you know, Tony Pollard is actually playing really, really well. You know, you've seen CeeDee Lamb becoming actually, you know, getting back on track after first missing Dak Prescott. You know, the offensive line, I believe this will be the fourth game in a row that basically we've had the same lineup. You know, Terrence Steele has gotten a little bit better. I'm not saying that he's ready to be a regular starter, but he's getting some experience that you know down the road that the guy will be a capable player. And so that's at least the good news on this season. The bad news has been that our defense, for the most part, just hasn't been there, but we're beginning to see some guys that are playing well. But it's my thing, and I've talked about this over and over and over again. The key on this isn't always the personnel. A lot of times, it's just a matter of the people not following their assignments. So I was watching the Minnesota Vikings getting killed by Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, it's hard to believe that this is, in his career, only his fourth game where he's had over 100 yards rushing. But he literally was unbelievable. Six rushing TDs. Now, this is a case where uh, New Orleans, basically, their whole wide receiver core was decimated. And they ended up running and running and running and running and running Kirk Cousins and crew in the ground. Like I said, Alvin Kamara had six rushing TDs, which tied the record, which was last made in 1929. 91 years that record has stood, that record has stood by itself. And now, Alvin Kamara is part of that record. And I'm not sure you'll see anybody rush for six TDs again. I, it's just unbelievable. But there was one play that typified everything I've always said. You know, I've always talked about the difference of having those defensive tackles. The Cowboys have not believed in defensive tackles. They're kind of an afterthought in the same way they think of safeties as an afterthought. And when I look at the New Orleans defense, the New Orleans defense was the defense I had wished that we were going to have. The way DeMario Davis, and oh my God. You, you want to know why the Jets are losers? Because they let go great players. You know, when DeMario, DeMario actually sat right here. DeMario Davis. I did an interview with DeMario Davis sitting right here. When DeMario, that's when he was a free agent. The Jets said, you know what? We don't want to pay that guy. He goes to New Orleans. Now, it's, it's kind of funny because he didn't make the Pro Bowl, yet he was all pro last year. The guy is a beast. He plays downhill. He plays with reckless abandon. When he tackles somebody, they go down. And when we hired Mike Nolan, I was sitting there thinking, oh, my God, he's going to be able to transform, you know, Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith into guys that are playing downhill that are team leaders. That's what I had hoped for. I don't know what happened in the translation. I don't know what happened along the way, but I wish that that had happened. It's just one of those things. But back to DeMario. DeMario Davis has not missed a game in nine years. 
nine years. Now, before we drafted Van Der Esch, I was like, Cowboys, go get that guy. About my man Calais Campbell. If we had had those two guys on this defense, this defense would be a lot different. But anyway, this play right here typifies everything that I say. I played nose tackle, okay? My job was I lined up over the center, and I just got the crap beat out of me, okay? I got hit by the guard. I got hit by the other guard. I got hit by the center. I got hit by the center and the guard. I got hit by the fullback. I get wham blocked by the tight end. Literally, I was just like a pinball, just getting pounded around. But that's the job of those defensive tackles or nose tackles as they call them now. They don't even call them nose guards anymore. I'm, I'm a dinosaur. But what I always talk about how when you rush the quarterback or when you are run stopping, each player has an assignment and you must in keep that lane integrity. If one guy gets out, it blows it all up. It makes it easier for the quarterback. Now, poor Kirk Cousins here. I want you to look at this because Kirk Cousins literally gets swallowed up, okay? Now, you, you see that they're showing blitz. The linebacker, there's my man Demario right there. The linebacker's in the gap. They're, they're, you know, they're showing blitz, all right? Now, let me see if I can do this here. I'm, I'm trying some different things here, guys, so bear with me. So what's going to happen is the linebackers are going to back off. Linebackers go back in coverage here, right? So now we actually have the blitz coming out here, and we have four linemen, okay? But what's key on this is you'll notice how he's got the outside, he's got the outside, and these three guys have to rush in the middle. Now, the thing is, what happens with us a lot of times, I've seen Tyrone Crawford, and I don't mean to single him out, but a lot of times Tyrone Crawford will spin outside here or try and get around. And when you do, it leaves it wide open. But what they do perfectly in here, and if we could just get our guys to do this, is they keep just pushing. You keep pushing. You don't have to get there and make the play. It's great if you do, but if you can continue pushing upfield and everybody holds their lane, the quarterback's got no place to go. I got no place to go. I got no place to go. Yeah, and he's except to go down. Except to go down. And what will happen is he can't run around the outside because these guys have the outside closed. He can't step up into the pocket, right? And literally the walls come crashing in. So let, let's watch the, watch the rest of this. Boom, look at this. They just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and literally smother him. They smother him. They keep the lane of integrity. If one guy gets out of his lane, the quarterback gets stuck right up in there and get out of there. And when we this play the Eagles with Hurts, that young Bears guy that can move, now watch Sunday. again. Look at this. Is this is a thing of beauty. This is what, look at that. that is, right Kirk Cousins is a deer caught in the headlights. Kirk, oh, look at this. Watch these guys up front. Boom. Look at You're the quarterback. You're the quarterback. What are you going to do? What are you going to do besides crap your pants? That's the only thing you can do right now is crap your pants. You can't go outside because there's a man here. Can't go out here. There's a man there. And these two guys are coming up your gut. And quarterbacks hate pressure in their face. They literally shut this play down completely. He's got no chance in hell to run with it, to throw with it. He can't do anything except take a sack. He's just going to take the big L. And if our defense could learn just to do that thing, again, even if they don't get this far upfield, as long as they are in their rush lane, he can't step up and he doesn't have a clear field of view. And that's one of those things that's been missing on our defense. We just cannot seem to shut things down. But let, let, let's go back just a hair here because I, I want you to see, see it. I want you to be Kirk Cousins with all this coming at you. I mean, this right. is an offensive line. Look at that. Line. All this is coming at you. Look at that. All that beef. Look at that. Oh, oh, please get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. He, my man is going down for real. And we must do this on Sunday against the Eagles. You have got to do that to Hurts. And any mobile quarterback, you must keep your lane assignments. If you don't, you're going to get eaten up. He's going to run for days. And that, my friends, is the biggest problem right there on the defensive front on one of the reasons why quarterbacks have been able to just tear us up. Kyler Murray did it. 
Lamar Jackson did it. Uh, Russell Wilson did it. Everybody does it because we do not keep our lane integrity. And that to me right there, that right there is going to be the biggest key on whether we win or lose this game and get a top five pick. All right. I appreciate everybody being here again. I hope you've all had a merry, merry Christmas. Tomorrow we got a couple more games to deal with, so we'll definitely be talking about that. i got to deliver some cookies and some pies to some friends and family and things tomorrow. So we're going to be all over the place. So you never know where I'm going to be. Yeah, don't know where I'm going to be, but we'll definitely be bringing it to you. I'm Mark Holmes, and Merry Christmas.